All right, uh, let's go. We're 40 seconds, folks. What? We're, this is very close to happening. All right, they're going for launch. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 30. Holy moly. Here we go. Here we go. 24, folks. Woo! Woo! All right. Remember, we've got Crew Dragon's launch abort system that can, in if there's any case, unlikely, but it will be used to get the astronauts away if anything goes wrong. But we've got a reliable rocket here. Nine, eight, eight, seven, six, six five, four, three, two, one. Light this candle, baby. Send it. Here we go. All right, folks. <sighs> Here we go. Nine Merlin engines. Wow. All right, folks. Here we go. The Falcon 9. The cornerstone of reliability in the space industry. Also, the one of the cheapest rides into space right now, especially for sending humans. All right, folks. So... We're at liftoff. The next thing that's going to happen is max Q, which is the ma the the point of the launch where the air outside, the vibrations, the the largest force on the rocket is at max Q. And so, if we get through that, and they actually pull back the throttle so that they can survive through this, because it could literally shake the whole thing apart. The uh, abort test that they did with the Crew Dragon aborted during this moment. We're at max Q. You can see the we're Mach 1, folks. M1D throttle up. Alright, so now they're going to pull up the throttle to get themselves to orbit. Woohoo! Here we go, folks. That's a big, big milestone right there. It's not over, but we're, this is huge. So we've got our crew there with their touchscreens. Such a wild difference compared to the shuttle days. Tracking is uh, a little low, but there there we go. There's our, our flame. So they are the main engine, the, the flames that you're seeing right now, the main engines are going to cut off in a little bit here, and then the second stage is going to ignite. All right. We're about 2 minutes 20 Five seconds at the launch. We're about to have the main engine cut off. First stage separate, go back down to Earth, and the second stage keep bringing those astronauts and the crew dragon into orbit. Main engine cut off. That's Miko, not Nico. Miko. There it is. There's our first stage. Woo! And there we go. So this rocket is specifically designed to be launched in the vacuum of space. Uh, that's why it's called the MBAC engine. Uh, engine. Um, but there's our crew, folks. Dude, this is... I can't believe this is happening right now. They look chill. They look real chill. They're designed to be the most comfortable ride into space. The Cadillac. The Cadillac. <laughs> but the price, it's a Honda Civic. <laughs> it's a Tesla. It's a Tesla. It's a Tesla. Yeah, one of the other things about the touchscreen uh, brings uh, Leland Melvin, one of the astronauts from the space shuttle era, a uh, great guy, um, he was mentioning, because he flew in the space shuttle with all those buttons and switches, the touch screens actually help them achieve more in a, in 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 shorter amount of time than you would with all those switches. So the touch screen is actually, and, and the way that the spacecraft is operating is supposed to be giving us, uh, or giving the astronauts, uh, the ability to do more, which is awesome. Oh my, they're so chill. It, it, I mean, this is <laughs> these are military men. They uh, they they have their mission. Um, they're test pilots, so I mean, I'm sure their nerves are crazy, but yeah, they make it look so easy. It is, man. Martin, I'm glad you're on, man. Hope you're doing well. Alright, folks, so this is... Alright, so we are... Second stage is bringing them 
closer into orbit, what they're trying to do is the space station's going 17,500 miles per hour around the planet. I know it always looks like it's standing still, but that's because there's something at the same speed looking at it whenever we look back down at Earth at it. Um, any of those images was like a space shuttle looking down at it as it was docking. Um, so they need to get to that speed. They're only at uh, 9,400 kilometers per hour um, right now. And they're only at 190 kilometers. I'm not. I'm not in, in altitude. I, I don't know the the actual altitude off the top of my head, but basically, what they're going to do is get to the point where they're going to do a burn to enter the orbit they need to to be in, um, uh, which they'll they'll continue to do. The entry burn, the first stage, is actually coming down. So we're going to have the entry burn for the first stage. You can see on the right there. I don't know if it's visible in the screen. I think it is, um, but the you can see on the right side we have the Falcon 9. That's the first stage, and we're looking, we're looking down to the planet Earth. And what they're doing is they're 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 getting the rocket to, you know, you launched it up, went back, and then eventually it has to return back and position itself so that it can be level to the planet. This reentry burn is gonna is gonna slow its speed so that it can get to the point where it can actually try and land. And we are seeing a landing burn here, which means we're going to see the first stage land, and we're going to get astronauts into, into space, which is uh, an absolute treat. Uh, and weirdly enough, landing a first stage rocket has kind of become routine, which uh, bums me out, but I'm going to enjoy them still. I think they're, they're wild that it even happens. I mean, literally, when, when the space shuttle was retired and SpaceX was working on this technology, some of the most esteemed experts and people that... Are, were, were the big greatest minds didn't think that having the ability to, to have reusable rockets was even possible. It was a waste of time, too much money, you'd never get it right. Um, and that's the magical thing about science is out, with enough time, with enough data, with a, and, and at a certain point, if you do what you're supposed to do to, to proof out, eventually the evidence speaks for itself and, and, and the mindset changes. And that's what SpaceX has done. They've uh, just in reusability, I mean, you see all these other companies now changing their approach to this reusable approach because you just can't compete with the cost. It's like flying an airplane to from Boston to Los Angeles and just leaving it. You're done. That's it. I'm done with the plane. Like, that would be an expensive ticket. This allows them to do four, five launches on this, basically the same amount of money. It's way cheaper for someone to launch into space. That's what we need. There's our entry burn, you can see. First stage is slowing itself back down, and those grid fins that you see right there, um, those are as it enters the atmosphere, goes out from the vacuum of space, and it, it encounters more and more particles of air. It's going to need to, well, it's going to want to twist and turn, and those grid fins are going to actuate to keep the rocket in the right position for its momentum so that at the last moment they do a landing burn, the legs deploy, and it lands. I think, based on the position of this, this is going to land. In the middle of the ocean, but um, on on a drone ship. But I, I haven't looked that up, so we'll, we'll see. We got cloud coverage. We'll see in a second here. Let's listen in. Such a cool view on your left screen, seeing Bob and Dad on Bradley. Yeah, it's. I agree. All right, we're entering the clouds with the first stage on the right there. And this is going to happen real, real fast. So Seco, uh, that's uh, second engine, uh, uh, the second stage engine cut off. So that's the engine that's been bringing them up further into that orbit. That is going to cut off here in just a second. And then that engine is going to cut down. Not a bad place to land. Yeah, take me with you. <laughs> All right, so second engine has now sh cut down. Oh, look at all the staff, man. It's crazy time. All right, so we're on the autonomous drone ship today. So we're, uh, I, I will say the landing burn is happening right now. We're going to start seeing it's going to start getting bright, and then it's going to land. Uh, it's going to happen very, very quickly here. Here we go. It may cut out from the vibrations. The drone ship is called, of course, I still love you. There it is, folks. 
Falcon 9, first stage has landed. Did it again.